In this video, we're going to be talking about the muscles of the lateral lower leg compartment, which pretty much amounts to the subtalar everters. The first one we'll cover is the fibularis longus, and know that depending on the source, you might also see this written as peroneus longus. Peroneus means the same thing as fibularis, although we're trying to get to more of using fibularis because it makes sense. These muscles run along the fibula and actually originate off of it. So the fibularis longus originates off of the fibular head, as you can see right here. That's this muscle in green. It also originates off of the proximal two-thirds of the lateral fibula, so about to right here, and a little bit on the intermuscular septa of the lower leg. Over here is another look at the fibularis longus muscle. Up here is the fibular head. And if we follow the muscle belly down, it eventually turns into a tendon, and we follow that tendon down, and it goes across the lateral aspect of the ankle. Let's look at that in a little more detail. So now, a little bit of anatomy. This bone right here is the fibula. If you go down to the very bottom, the lateral aspect, you can see the lateral malleolus over here. The green bone is the calcaneus. The blue one, which was originally mislabeled, is the cuboid. This purple one is the fifth metatarsal. Here's the base of the fifth metatarsal. And then in pink over here, this is the first metatarsal. If you look posteriorly, you can actually see the soleus muscle right here. And then this right here is the component of the Achilles tendon that comes from the gastrocnemius. Of course, that of the soleus fuses with it, but the Achilles tendon then attaches or inserts on the posterior calcaneus right here. Now what you're seeing over here are the two fibularis muscles. The one in the back right here, you can see a little bit of its muscle belly there a lot more of it back here. This is the fibularis brevis. We'll be covering this in a few minutes. The muscle overlying it is the fibularis longus. Now by this point, as close to the ankle as we are, most of the fibularis longus is no longer muscular. It's become mostly tendinous. There's a little bit of muscular component on the outskirts of it right here, but especially as we go down here to the lateral malleolus, it's pretty much just become a tendon at this point. Now the tendon, down here is encapsulated by this pink structure, which is the tendon sheath, which actually provides some lubrication and allows the tendon to glide more smoothly as the muscle pulls on the insertions, which we'll see in just a minute. But regardless, the tendon actually crosses underneath or deep to these fibrous connective tissue structures here called the peroneal retinacula. This one up on the top is the superior peroneal retinaculum, and this one down here, which is not labeled, is the inferior peroneal retinaculum. And so you'll see that the fibularis longus tendon actually goes underneath both of those as it then crosses underneath the tendon of brevis and goes underneath the foot. And this translucent structure right here is meant to show the tendon as it goes under the foot. So here you see the green tendon of fibularis longus snaking underneath the foot. And notice that it crosses underneath the foot on the fifth digit side, which is right here on the right side of the screen. So that makes this the first digit, or the hallux. And you'll notice that once it crosses underneath the foot, it then traverses immediately towards that first digit, where it then attaches on two structures. One of those insertions down here is the first metatarsal. The other insertion right here would be the medial cuneiform bone. Now the innervation of the fibularis longus is via the superficial fibular nerve, as is the fibularis brevis. The specific nerve roots that contribute to this muscle would be L5 and S1, and the blood supply is via the fibular artery. Now the actions of fibularis longus are going to be subtalar eversion and plantar flexion of the ankle, although normally we associate this muscle with subtalar eversion, thus the title of the slide. And the fibularis longus also helps support the longitudinal and transverse arches of the foot. Now another important point here. If we look at neurological conditions like stroke or multiple sclerosis, among others, if we compare the strength of the inverters and the everters, generally the inverters retain more of their strength and sometimes are spastic. The everters are almost always the weaker of the two. The inverters might still be weak, but normally the everters are weaker. So normally in those conditions, it's a good idea to look for strength here. And if they have some recoverable strength, to strengthen the everters. We'll look at a couple techniques at the end of the video that are involved in strengthening these everter muscles. 
Now let's look at the fibularis brevis. So the green one was fibularis longus. This one down here in the normal muscle color is fibularis brevis. If we look at this picture, we see the fibularis longus up here. And then the muscle belly of fibularis brevis is a lot lower. But notice that the tendon of fibularis longus actually runs over or superficial to the muscle belly of fibularis brevis. The origin of fibularis brevis is on the distal two-thirds of the lateral fibula, so it originates way farther down than fibularis longus does, right? And it also has some origin on the anterior intermuscular septum of the lower leg. Now if we go back to this picture right here, here's our fibularis brevis. It underlies the fibularis longus, but again, it moves into a tendon, which is also protected by one of those tendon sheaths, which helps lubricate the tendon as the muscle pulls on the insertion. And if we follow the tendon, it runs underneath or deep to the superior and inferior peroneal retinacula. But if we look at this tendon, it doesn't cross underneath the foot. It actually goes directly to the fifth metatarsal and actually inserts on the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal, which is at the lateral aspect of this bone. Its innervation is also via the superficial fibular nerve, getting nerve root contributions from L5 and S1, and its blood supply is via the anterior tibial artery. And then the actions of fibularis brevis are similar to that of its cousin. It performs subtalar eversion, and it assists the gastroc and soleus with plantar flexion, but it does not play a role in supporting the arches of the feet. That's a job for the fibularis longus. So if we want to work the subtalar everters on the lateral side of the lower leg, we're going to be performing this movement, subtalar eversion. Now, you can probably see it a little bit from this perspective, but the lateral side of my foot is coming off the ground. That's eversion. And it's a pretty small range of motion. Normal range of motion for eversion is about 20 degrees. It's very small. But if you want to go through a larger range of motion, what you can do is begin in a position of subtalar inversion right here, where the bottom side of the foot is pointed toward the midline. That's inversion. And then we use the everters to go into maximum subtalar eversion. And this goes through a much larger range of motion than if we just did this. And so this is how we want to work those everters. So here I have a closed loop TheraBand, and I find that the best way to wrap it around the foot like that is to do it about one inch proximal to the MTP joints. And so then I uh, pick up enough tension in the TheraBand, so that way when my foot is at rest and no muscles are contracted, I'm in a position of subtalar inversion. And so from here, I can simply activate the subtalar everters and go into maximum eversion like that. I can hold for a couple seconds and then relax back. And then contract, and then relax back. Now we're gonna be looking at medial foot downward drives. In contrast to the TheraBand resisted eversion, this exercise is actually really good for strengthening the everters when they have a very low manual muscle test grade. For example, in neurological patients where they may have a two minus, a two, a two plus, all the way up to about a three plus. But once you get beyond that, then you should default to a more challenging eversion exercises like the TheraBand resisted one. Now to perform the medial foot downward drives, the patient's gonna be in seated like you see right here, and they're gonna begin with the affected leg, the one that you're strengthening, in a position where all the muscles of the leg and the ankle and the foot are all at rest, and the lateral aspect of the foot is planted on the ground, but the medial aspect, the side with the great toe, is off the ground, at rest. And then you're going to drive the medial aspect of the foot down. What I often say is, once you drive it to the ground, then imagine trying to push it down even further through the ground. And you'll hold this position for two to three seconds, sometimes even more, and then you'll return your foot to the starting position. Now, a couple of notes here. One, you'll notice I'm actually using my arm up here to block my thigh, to block hip contribution. So there's a tendency, if you don't block this movement or don't have sufficient control, which a lot of people won't, 
When they drive the medial aspect of the foot down, they'll actually bring the entire leg inward. So they'll get some hip contribution, really a compensation. We want to minimize that compensation. So I'm just using my arm to block that. So I maximize the percentage of the movement that is subtalar eversion. The other thing is that this exercise is gravity facilitated or it actually goes with gravity. And that's because gravity would of course tend to make the medial aspect of the foot go downwards and that's the same direction I'm moving it. That's why this exercise is really good when you're strengthening the everters at very low manual muscle test grades, like even down to two minus. The last exercise we're gonna look at involves a muscle that's not in this compartment. It's actually in the anterior compartment of the lower leg. It's extensor digitorum longus, which we normally think of as an extensor of digits two through five. But remember, this muscle also functions as a subtalar ever. So if we're trying to strengthen eversion, we can also do this exercise, which is open chain digital extensions, in particular targeting active range of motion of digits two through five. And this is actually a component of what they call toe yoga, which I cover in another video. So you're gonna be seated or standing with your foot resting on the floor as you see right here. And you're going to selectively activate your extensor digitorum longus and brevis to extend your lateral four digits, so two through five, while keeping your hallux or big toe planted on the ground. So it's just selective extension of digits two through five. And it looks like this. So the hallux is planted on the floor and I'm extending digits two, three, four, and five, mostly at the MTP joints, but I might get a little bit of interphalangeal extension as well. Now you'll notice when I do this movement, I can't help but get a little bit of subtalar eversion. I note that because the lateral aspect of my foot is coming off the floor. And so if you wanna strengthen subtalar eversion fully, you should also target this muscle as well. Now I'm cutting it a little bit short here, but in general, you wanna hold that extension for around two to three seconds or longer, and then return your toes to the start position. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.